गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ चैप्टर फाइव सेपरेशन ऑफ सब्सटेंसेस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी स्टडीड हाउ टू सेपरेट अ सॉलिड फ्रॉम अ मिक्सचर ऑफ सॉलिड बाई टेक्निक्स लाइक हैंड पिकिंग थ्रेशिंग विनोइंग सीविंग एंड मैग्नेटिक सेपरेशन टूडे वी विल डिस्कस हाउ टू सेपरेट इन सोलबल सब्सटांसिस फ्रॉम अ मिक्सचर ऑफ सॉलिड एंड लिक्विड It can be done by applying the techniques of sedimentation and decantation, loading, filtration, and centrifugation. So let us study about these few techniques in detail today. Now we come to our second topic, that is separation of insoluble solid substances from a mixture of solid and liquid. the two most common techniques that are employed here are sedimentation and decantation these techniques are used if one of the component is an insoluble substance and is heavier than the liquid for better understanding let us perform an activity take a mixture of sand and water in a glass and allow this mixture to stand undisturbed for some time when we do so we observe that the heavier sand particles they settle down at the bottom of the beaker this layer of sand is known as the sediment and the clear liquid that is obtained is known as the supernatant sedimentation process is followed by decantation in which the clear supernatant is poured out without disturbing the sediment when you perform this activity you will observe that the water that we obtain after sedimentation and decantation is still not very clear there are still fine mud and dust particles which remain suspended and do not settle down easily settling down of these fine dust and clay particles can be made faster by a method known as loading it is done by using a chemical substance known as alum in hindi it is known as fitkari alum is soluble in water the particles of alum entangle suspended dust and clay particles and make them heavier when these particles they become heavier they settle down rapidly thus increasing the rate of sedimentation the third very common technique which is used for separation of insoluble solid substances from a liquid is filtration like we strain tea leaves from the prepared tea we can also strain the muddy water but the holes of the strainer are too big and the small mud particles they will pass through the strainer therefore for this type of straining a special type of strainer is used this is known as filter paper filter paper is a piece of special paper that has millions of tiny holes in it the holes of the filter paper are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eyes but you can see them only through a microscope so when muddy water is passed through the filter paper the mud particles being bigger in size cannot pass through the filter paper and remain behind on the filter paper this is known as a residue the clear water it passes through the filter paper and collects in the beaker kept below this clear liquid obtained is known as filtrate the process of filtration is commonly used in our daily life there are so many examples for example fruit and vegetable juices are usually filtered before drinking to separate the seeds and the pulp secondly you must have seen your mother making paneer or cottage cheese also the paneer is separated from the liquid by passing through a fine filtering cloth or the muslin cloth then of course there is our water purifier which also works on the same principle 
If we look at the filtration and sieving processes, they look almost similar to us. But no, there is a difference between the two processes. The very important difference is that filtration is a method that is used for separation of insoluble substances from a liquid, whereas sieving is used for a mixture of two solids which differ in size. Secondly, in filtration, the insoluble component is left behind on the filter paper as residue and liquid is obtained as the filtrate. Whereas in sieving, one of the components which is larger in size, it is left behind on the sieve, whereas the smaller component, it passes through the holes and is obtained at the bottom. The next process is centrifugation. It is a very simple process that you must have seen at your home also. How do we take out the cream from the milk? By a simple method of churning. It is done by rotating the liquid on high speed either by hand or by using a mixture. When the mixture it rotates at the high speed, the lighter components are separated from the heavier components. This similar technique it is used in pathological labs also for separation of blood cells from the plasma. This is it for today children. In the next class we will study about the other techniques like evaporation, condensation etc.